I have a first edition, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. My dad actually purchased this back in the mid-60s. I have the mailing envelope from Texian Press in Waco, Texas. I think there were book dealers. So probably a local bookseller. I, exactly, or, yeah. and so it was in that mailing envelope, and Fabulous. it was postmarked December of 65. And I was only two years old. Right, I right. don't know how much he paid for it. My father passed away when I was 11. Then the books went to my mother, and I just remember growing up with them. He. Um, was obsessed with The Wizard of Oz, so uh, he started collecting them. What's unique about this particular first edition is that it's autographed by the illustrator who's W.W. W. Dinslow. He also has an original piece of art inside the cover of this yeah. book. W.W. W. Dinslow, a very popular illustrator at the turn of the century. Yes. And he and Baum collaborated in a really special way. Yes. on The Wizard of Oz, and it's where both of their names were immortalized, especially Denslow. My understanding is even he was maybe a little bit more well-known than, than the author at the at time. At the time. Yeah. And then after the book took off. Yes. But they were both linked. It's kind exactly. of one of those situations. And I think they share the copyright, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. It was an expensive book, and it was so important to them that it be illustrated in color. Color printing back then was expensive. You needed, it was a very complicated process. They agreed it was so important, Denslow and Baum, that they paid to have that done. And then later on, there was a falling out and issues, I think, over copyright ensued yes. because they were both sure. big celebrities by that point. Yes. That can lead to friction. This is their ideal partnership was here. This is the front free end paper. And what Denslow has done is really quite extraordinary because it really matches. This is a printed illustration, but you could see his style. He went to very great degree to draw the scarecrow. This is a cat-like figure. I'm not sure who that is with I'm a whip, like, sure. a, like a circus ringmaster it almost looks like, but it's inscribed within that piece of paper. So he took a lot of time. So I'm thinking, wow, that's interesting. First of all, it's a fabulous book. The book itself, The Wizard of Oz, is valuable. But when I see this, this isn't just signed at a book signing. What's so special is this drawing which is an ink drawing. It's clearly an original drawing that was clearly done for the person the book was inscribed to, Dorothy Roundtree. Now, Dorothy, you think, okay, that's interesting. Her book, from Den, which was his abbreviation of Denslow, and then uh, he puts Christmas 1900, which is just, just soon after the book was really just being published. Yeah. And he signs with his signature seahorse monogram. It's, it's notable as his symbol. It's on the spine of the book, it's everywhere. So the book was published in 1900, Chicago, by uh, George M. Hill. Your dad, the appeal was Wizard of Oz, you think? Denslow? I think or? initially Wizard of Oz. He was born in 1914, so obviously when he's growing up as a child, I'm assuming Oz was very, very sure. popular. Sure. That was a childhood obsession. Yep. And so in adulthood, he had the means to start collecting. And he collected thousands and thousands of books. I started to ask myself, why, you know, what's the connection? This is not just a little casual signature. I looked up Roundtree, and what was interesting is the association, there was a, a Harrison Roundtree who was Dorothy's father. And Harrison H. Roundtree was a very wealthy Chicago banker investor. Okay. He, in fact, helped Baum out. You know about Baum had financial problems. Yes, uh, all through he, his life, I think. Roundtree was very much linked to the whole Baum Denslow's story, I gotcha. which, uh, further investigation, we find that there is even a suggestion that the Dorothy character might have been named after Roundtree's uh, daughter. Oh, wow. So this could be the original Dorothy. There's a lot of dispute because he had a niece named Dorothy who passed away as a child, bounded, okay. by the name of Dorothy, and they thought maybe it was a homage to her. Okay. At the same time, we find out that a good close associate had a daughter named Dorothy who was very meaningful to the whole enterprise. Sure. And to have that inscription done with such care, obviously a Christmas sure. gift. This is no longer just, you know, a girl named Dorothy. This might really be the Dorothy, possibly. So the book itself is fabulous. It's a second state text, which I would assume was given as a presentation because the text is accurate. Yes. It's most up to date, still from the year of publication. The book, by the way, is in very nice condition. I'd say it's close to fine. It's very good to find. Hinges are good, it hasn't been repaired, no yes. restoration. No. It's just on honest copy, we call it. The book itself, auction estimate would be in the twenty to $30,000, yeah. you know, just a copy. No signature, no Denslow. Yeah. With the added Denslow, with that fine drawing presenting it, and with the depth of the potential Dorothy Association, it really elevates this thing, okay. you know? So I would say safely, if we were an auction estimate, 
we put 60 to 80,000 estimate. Oh, my goodness. Now, that, yeah. now that's an estimate. And it's not for sale. <laughs> Good. I would insure it. It's worth, it's $100,000 insurance. 